Well, howdy folks. Thank you for watching. Hey, today I'm going to be getting out in the garden and I wanted to show you some of the some of the stuff that I use to control bugs and weeds and things like that. Um, but I would like to mention before I do that, I don't endorse any of the things that I'm about to show you. It's just stuff that I use, okay? None of the brand names you're about to see are in any way affiliated with me, nor I with them, and I'm not getting any money from them. This is not uh, a paid uh, promotion or anything like that. Okay, so in other words, no endorsements from anybody. I'm not making any money off of them, but I just wanted to show you what I use. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, the subscribe button. Click it. Click that subscribe button. Click the little bell icon so you get notices when I put up more videos. And also, click the thumbs up. Helps me out a lot in suggested videos for other people. Okay, so it pushes my video forward. So do me that favor. Just click that. And we're about to get out in the garden. And I want to show you what I use. So let's do that. Whether it be weeds or bugs, sometimes we need some pest control. And there's different ways. I mean, for weeds, sometimes you just reach down and you pull the thing out of the soil and try to get as much root as possible. You know, that's one of the best ways for weeds that I know of if it's in a vegetable garden. Vegetable gardens, you got to kind of watch out for them because, well, if you use a herbicide in a vegetable garden, there's a good chance you're going to wipe out your vegetable garden. All right. Now, I brought out... Some of the things that I use, oh, so we can kind of talk about the vegetable garden. Now, I wish today that I had a bunch of ants all over my lettuce the way I normally have. But the flood that we had last night, we had quite a flash flood, took out a lot of that stuff. So, it, my ants will be back. They'll do their thing. Ants are wonderful for taking care of things like thrips and um, aphids, stuff like that. Um, a couple of years ago, my okra was incredible. And I didn't have to worry about treating it with anything because the ants were doing a knockout job of taking care of all of the bugs on the okra. Didn't have any issues at all. In fact, I had perfect okra pretty much all through that season. So sometimes my ants really come through for me. Um, and they were doing a beautiful job on the lettuce. It's been just as healthy as can be. Um, so I've left it alone for the most part, except for a couple of sprayings where I did a spraying of malathion around the base of them. And then a spraying of some dish soap over the top of them. Uh, and that way I kind of get the best of both worlds. Now, I can't say I do organic farming, okay? That's not my thing. But let me get into some of the stuff I do use. Um, we're going to start with, I just mentioned it, plain good old fashioned dish soap. Don't buy anything expensive. Just get some cheap dish soap. Mix it up, you know, a, about three or four tablespoons to a gallon of water. In other words, a quarter of a cup. And um, that usually does a really good job, but it is a very short term thing. Okay, it's not going to be killing bugs tomorrow, the next day, and the day after that. It's just a, you hit them once with it, it takes out what it takes out, and then that's that. Uh, it's a one-time kill. Now there's another thing that does treat the leaves and helps to make them quite toxic for bugs, and that is neem oil. Um, now neem oil, believe it or not, that stuff's been around. I, I, I like to research the history on the ingredients that I use in my garden. And that's what I was doing recently. I was learning when this stuff was invented. Neem oil has been around for thousands of years, okay? So it, it's <laughs> tried, true, and tested. And it was used on humans before it was used on plants. So it's not a new thing, folks. Neem oil is something to, uh, for you to give a try. Uh, it also works into organic practices, if I remember right, I can't swear to it, but I think that, that it's permitted for organic. Um, malathion. Malathion was originally invented in 1956. Um, now, I'm not touting any brand names here, so if you see a brand name label, I'm not saying, oh, buy this. 
I'm just saying the ingredients, okay? Um, now, I like using this company only because they make it easy. They put just the name of the ingredient right across the label without it being some name they made up for the ingredient. Some companies do that so that they can lock you into buying their product thinking, oh, you can't get this item anywhere else. Um, you know, for instance, Monsanto came out with their glyphosate, which is a herbicide. And, um, but then later on, after they lost their patent on that, everybody was putting it out. And so, you know, you read the labels, but remember, that stuff's dangerous. Anyway, Malathion, this stuff was built, made in 1956, very effective against the bugs. However, think of it this way. Do you want to spray your lettuce today and in two days eat those leaves that have been coated with this malathion and oil? Uh, doesn't sound too tasty to me. It doesn't sound very appetizing, frankly. So I avoid it. Now, there are certain things that are kind of natural. Uh, ferric acid. I mean, if you hear something outside, it's raining lightly. Yesterday, we had an absolute flood. It was a... It was a floater, let me tell you. Anyway, this stuff here, this is snail bait. This is uh, also known as, um, let me make sure I say it the right way, sodium ferric, which is iron, all right? And this is something that's actually used to treat people who have iron deficiencies. Not, not in the form of slug and snail bait, but the chemical itself is used for that. So it is basically it's just iron, and it messes with the slug or the snail's uh, copper production and uh, messes them up and basically they die in a couple of days after eating it so a really neat way of handling that and it's also when it gets into the soil it makes your plants green it's just adding iron to the soil folks so it's good for for the garden slug and snail bait feel free to use it liberally oh, now this see we got rain hitting now that's our extra noise i'm feeling a little on my back I'm trying, I was trying to get this done before the rain, but <laughs> guess what didn't happen? Anyway, this little item here, we call it seven dust. All right, now, folks, have you ever heard of crop dusting? All right, they, that's what they're using. They're using this, it's carbaryl. Okay, now carbaryl has been around for quite some time, and it was invented in 1958 for the purpose of dusting crops with, just straight across the board. All right, carbaryl is effective. I've used it since I was a kid. All right, you simply dust your crops with it and then you go on with life. But again, do you want to dust your lettuce with it? I wouldn't mind dusting my carrots, the edible parts underground, not a big deal. I don't mind dusting the tomato bushes because I know those tomatoes are going to be a little while in the development. And this takes care of tomato worms really well. This is a product I use too, it's mosquito bits. They also make mosquito dunks. The difference is the mosquito dunk is slightly lower in the chemical that's in this. And, and I don't remember how it's pronounced either. It's, it's a strain of bacteria. It's not a chemical, I'm sorry. A strain of bacteria that's in this that kills the mosquito larvae. And um, it's very effective. I used this for many years and I've seen direct results from it. Um, the mosquito dunks have a lower percentage of that bacteria in them so they are but they last longer so they're good for long term uh, where if you just have a pool of water and you know you've got mosquito larvae there go ahead and put these bits in it and it'll kill them very quickly but it doesn't stick around for long term use so you have to retreat frequently if you use the bits okay this is the difference there um let me go to the back of my little list here these are just different things I use in the garden, folks. I just want to kind of break it out and share with you what I use. Doesn't mean this is the only thing you can use. And it doesn't mean these are the best things to use. It's just what I've used over the years and the things that I've discovered work for me. And again, Zone 7A in the panhandle of Texas, nothing grows here. It's amazing to get green at all. Okay, this is a good example of what I was talking about earlier. Companies that will use their name okay daconil this is a product that again i'm not touting brand names um but it's made by i think a company let's see what it is called garden tech okay the chemical that's in this is uh chlorothanol chlorothanol i can't i have a hard time with some of these names okay 
anyway this uh this is a fungicide that has been around for a while it was invented in 1966 all right and it's quite effective so if you're getting like uh, powdery mildew or black fungus on the ground or anything like that break this stuff out it works but there's other companies that sell the exact same chemical so take a look around all right you don't have to buy brand name in order to get that right chemical um, you know there's other companies that make carbaryl there's a lot of companies that make malathion I usually just get whatever I can find that's a good value okay um, herbicides generally we don't use herbicides in the garden okay because they kill our vegetables so we just get down we just become our own herbicide you just sit there and you pull those weeds out of the ground like I'm doing right here and uh, that's the best way overall in a vegetable garden I found now it doesn't mean you have to sit there and pull each one you can use a hoe it takes care of dozens of them in seconds okay so consider those items of hoes and cultivators are very good at dealing with the weeds and helping you to control them so I would say stick with your mechanical techniques let me get what I have here okay so I have both of these items sitting out here because I use them both regularly this is an old hula ho and I mean old I think this one was purchased way back like in the the uh, late 60s maybe early 70s hula ho and these are still made it's called a stirrup ho is what they call that and they work like a charm the head will have a little play in it and it's supposed to okay so don't think that they're broken or loose they're supposed to wobble um, the other type is your typical garden cultivator these little tines loosen the soil making pulling weeds and getting their roots really easy but also you can just work it through the soil and break all of them loose and it usually takes care of killing most of them those that doesn't kill well when you come back a few days later and do it again it takes care of the problem so mechanical for vegetable garden is my go-to source for dealing with weeds however if you're looking just to wipe everything out in an area so that you can grow later on there's a product product called uh, glyphosate and it's a, a type of glyphosate salt basically it's something that was produced by Monsanto a long time ago and uh, of course if you like lymphatic cancer this is the go-to source um, sorry I said that with this label up front but the real truth of the matter is there were some serious lawsuits they lost the lawsuits and yeah it this stuff will cause lymphatic cancer so when you're using it glove up make sure you wear long sleeve long pants socks impermeable shoes and then put a respirator on okay put a respirator on people I don't mean a filter mask I mean the big rubber thing that fits on your face that has two cartridges there that you breathe through okay use a respirator so you don't run any risk lymphatic cancer is not fun okay you don't want to play that game now some things are quite incredible Triclopier ester is something that has come out lately that was uh, produced and being used heavily by the Forest Service when they need to uh, get rid of woody plants and shrubs and stuff like that. You can use this and it will wipe out pretty much whatever you put it on, okay? So keep it away from your vegetable patch unless you want to sterilize an area of it for a period of time. This is one of the things you can use, Triclopier ester. Again, be very careful with inhaling or getting any of this stuff on you this stuff's dangerous folks now this one was invented in 1980 and um, used by the like I said the Forest Service 2,4-D something that we have become familiar with where it's a common thing that's used for killing broadleaf weeds in people's yards and alleys it is still one of the most pop popular, most used herbicides that you can find. And it's also a really good price. 
Now, it needs to be noted, though, this is one of the chemicals, one of the two chemicals that was in Agent Orange. You know that thing that made so many soldiers sick? All right, so, like, once again, you want to use it with great caution. Long sleeve shirts, gloves, long pants, socks, impermeable shoes, and wear a filter mask, a respirator, okay? Not, not just, the, not the thing that you wore during um, the pandemic, but a respirator, okay? We're the real thing, folks. It's better for you. Now, this stuff was invented in 1941. It was first used by the U.S. military, and it was used as an exfoliant, okay? It was used as an exfoliant uh, at the end of World War II. Uh, when they were going into the islands there around Japan, they needed somebody to clear that the, the, the brush and the, the forest greenery so that they could see their enemy and shoot them. And this is one of the items they used. Later on, they mixed it with another, which was uh, basically, instead of uh, dimethicin salt, it was a, a 340, okay, if you get around to it, a tri, uh, trimethachlorazone something or another. Yeah, and um, bad stuff, all right? They don't let you play with that, I don't think. Um, not that I'm aware of. But 2,4-D, you can still use it. Uh, be very careful with it, and know that if you get it on your vegetables, it's going to kill your vegetables, folks. Plain and simple. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to kill plants. And it's pretty effective, okay? I got this because dealing with Creeping Charlie is extremely difficult. So I bought this to use in patches in my yard, in the alley, and other places where I need to control it that it's really bad. It needs to be noted, it will hurt grasses, it'll kill bent grass, it will hurt badly uh, Bermuda grass. If you use enough of it, it'll kill the Bermuda grass. And a little teeny tiny bottle like this is not cheap. This stuff you're going to pay, oh, I paid 38 for this one. All right? They're not cheap. So anyway, there's a lot of choices out there. I was looking at many of the choices on um, online for doing uh, organic gardening. And a lot of those choices use biological sources, bacterias and things like that to help control whatever. Um, which, hey, that's what this is. Really neat, huh? So we're learning to better control our crops in a safer way. And that's sort of what this is. Hey, if you're lucky enough to get ants, be careful that you don't kill your ants. You know, unless of course they're fire ants, go ahead and kill those fire ants. But the rest of them, they're pretty much safe to have around. Those little black ants are nice. Harvester ants will want to share your garden with you, but unless you get a bad group of them, they're usually not too much trouble. We have harvesters around here, but they usually keep to themselves. They don't like vegetable gardens and they keep away from people. Well, that's it. I have shared with you my knowledge of what I use in my garden. And most of the time, it works pretty well, as long as I keep up with it. Regular sprayings with the dish soap is one of the cheapest and coolest way of doing it. Use that neem oil to keep things under control. And when you have to, when you absolutely have to, break out that malathion to get the bugs under control. Otherwise, avoid it unless it's really bad, okay? Because generally, the safer stuff, the old-fashioned stuff, generally it works really good. And don't forget, slug and snail bait, whether you have them or not, it's good for your soil. Well, back to the shop with this stuff. Hey, thanks for watching. Do me a favor. If you would, please click subscribe. Click the bell so you know when I'm going to be posting new stuff. And drop some comments down below. Love that stuff. Give me some comments, some ideas, some, um, some things that you might want to see. I can try out. I don't mind trying certain things. Some things just don't work in Zone 7A. Uh, and then we're working the garden. I'll be putting in some new pepper plants very soon and some pepper plants I already put in died for some reason. Don't know what that's about, but I'll look into it and we'll find out. Anyway, 
things growing things looking good tomatoes are going crazy one of them died over there it was one of my seedlings sometimes things happen um, and hopefully we won't have any uh, more major floods <laughs> we'll see thank you for watching good gardening to you and uh, have a good day <laughs> bye bye okay I'll take you around the garden here let you take a look since I've been talking about it, you can see the lettuce has done very well got the spinach up and going right there oh, got a little bit of bolting happening on those bigger heads it's time to get those harvested and start planting for some fresh the radicchio was starting to head up don't know if it will it's hard to get things to grow in this crazy climate here my basil over there has just gone crazy no i'm sorry not basil but <laughs> oregano over here we got the uh tarragon that's done very well and of course down next to it there the the tomatoes they've done so well my old carrot patch there it's about to come up as well as these onions which i keep saying i'm about to pull and then behind that i'm about to get that anise out of there all right the new carrots right down here look at that we got carrots just coming right up everywhere the kohlrabi it has formed some beautiful bulbs down in there folks so yeah we got kohlrabi bulbs down there oh yeah i'm about to be cooking them up okay now and also over here my asparagus <laughs> i just harvested yesterday now i need to come back out and do some more harvesting today it's really cranking out lots and lots of asparagus and my thyme is starting to bloom down there it has turned into a huge mound and i'm very proud of that so here comes the rain again thank you for watching <laughs>